Hello, my friends, and welcome. My name is Dennis, and today we are going to talk about the one of the most popular single aisle airplanes in our world. It's Boeing 737 NG. I say again, we are going to talk about only NG, next generation modification, and it's third generation of Boeing 737. I am currently type rated captain on this airplane, and do I like it? Well, every airplane has its own pluses and minuses, pros and cons, good sides and bad sides. So today we are going to discuss all of that. So fasten your seatbelts and let's start, my friends. Good things and not so good things about this airplane. Let's start from the good things. The first one is reliability and it's very reliable. It's extremely reliable. You know, I used to fly ATR-42 and ATR-72. 300, 500, 600s version, the newest, by the way. And I thought that the ATR is very reliable airplane, but Boeing 737, I think it's even more reliable. Let's just recall some of the models and generations of Boeing 737. First, it was Jurassic Generation Boeing 737-200 with low bypass engines, Pratt & Whitney or something, and it's still in operation mostly for military. The second generation uh, was Boeing 737 Class 6, Boeing 737 300-500 versions. And next, it was what we have today on our review, Boeing 737 Next Generation. And it's already have good screens and the new models of engine CFM 56-7 Bravo. And those engines are really, very reliable. I have a video on my channel about that engine, so I went to our hangar and I filmed about it, so you can check it out. And Boeing factory solved all the problems that were happening to previous generations. So with every generation, Boeing 737 got better and more reliable. Well, eventually Boeing 737 Max is not so reliable, but we'll talk about it later. It should be more reliable right now than it flies. Then I was flying ATR, I had some of the cases, then I just wanted to select some switch, and I have had the switch in my hands, just ripped it off. And I cannot imagine this happening to the Boeing cockpit. All the materials are very rigid and strong, even the plastic it looks like a metal, you know? All the selectors, levers, I think they are very reliable. And also guys, Boeing 737NG is the third generation airplane, so it has no any fly-by-wire system or sophisticated flight control system, which requires backup sources like fan that we have on Airbus, just pumps out and uh, providing with some kind of electricity and minimum pressure for hydraulic system. Here we have just direct leakage to the flight controls. So if every system would fail, electrical system, hydraulic system, and both of the engines, you will still be able to control the airplane and safely glide it and land it. And one more thing about those superb CFM56 engines. Actually, we had a record in our airline, so one of the engines were maintained in fully operative condition on one of our airplanes for 60,000 hours without removal it from the airplane wing itself. So it was maintained for 60,000 hours on one place and was working fine. Okay, my friends, I think it was enough for reliability. Let's move to the next one. But first, if you like what I'm doing for aviation community, please consider subscribing. So by pushing this red button over here, you'll be moved to subscribe page and you can subscribe to my channel. And also, I'm always open for a conversation. So we have suggestions, uh, I don't know, questions, everything, please comment below. And also press the like to this video. Let's go. And now it is handling. As you already know, we don't have any fly-by-wire system. So airfoils are controlled by mechanical linkage and hydraulic boosters. But there are some kind of strange systems like elevator fuel computers that provide simulated aerodynamic forces to your control column. So you don't really feel real aerodynamic forces, but miraculously you control this airplane in better way and it feels much better compared to ATR 42 and 72. I don't know why, but I really enjoy controlling this airplane airplane manually. And there is also advanced automatic flight control system which helps you to reduce workload inside the cockpit in critical stages of your flight and you can also land this airplane automatically. Not everywhere, but you can. And also good thing in handling and it's not only Boeing 737 feature, it can be applied for most of the jet airplanes where you have positive pitch on approach and the risk of touching your nose will first upon landing is 
minimum. Speaking about the nose landing gear, well, it is connected to your rudder. So by deflecting your pedals, you also can deflect the nose landing gear by seven degrees to the left or to the right. And it's a good feature if you have some kind of crosswind during your landing roll or takeoff roll. The next good thing for a pilot that this airplane is very popular. So if you ask me what type rating should I have, I'll tell you, you'd better have Boeing 737 and G or maybe Max or Airbus 320. They are very popular, so you have your job for sure. Here we have easy. Well, stay cool and easy. Actually, I apply that for aircraft manuals. We have many of manuals, flight crew operation manual, flight crew training manual, QRHs, IFMs, miles, etc, etc, etc. And they all written in plain and understandable English language, very plain language. And there should be no any misunderstanding in Boeing's procedures. And the next we have schedule, schedule, let's say crew, rooster crew planning. Actually, it's also can be applied for many of jet airplanes. But if you fly a small regional jet like, let's say, Sergi or Embraer 145, or you fly small turboprop, you can have as many as eight legs per day. Here, you usually have four flights per day. So it's not too much. Continue. Simulators. There are many simulators in the world of this Boeing 737 and G type, so you can choose and they compete for pilots. So the price of the simulators are low. So it's the lowest possible maybe type rating that you can afford right now. I think the same for Airbus, but it could be just a little bit more expensive. And the last from good goes to low. What does it mean, my friends? Well, actually, literally, this airplane is very low and it was built to have maintenance on every airport available. So. Maintenance guys, technicians, they just don't need any letters for engine maintenance. And there are no special electronic locks to open the cargo doors, so there is just mechanical lock and everyone can open them. And that reduces the maintenance cost and the airplane total cost. That's why it is good. Very sad news, my friends. We're going to not so good things about this airplane. Well, the first one is it uses the old technology designed in 1960s. And you can see it in every airplane generation. If you take, for example, Boeing 737 MAX overhead panel and compare it to Jurassic Boeing 737 slash 200, the overhead panel will look similar. They all have these switches and great buttons and bulbs. You won't see this type of technology in modern airplanes. And modern airplanes have fly-by-wire systems. Here we have just mechanical linkage boosted by hydraulic systems. But anyway, you can just fly it as it is. It's very reliable, as I said to you before. I would compare this airplane with the old and rigid Toyota Land Cruisers from 1970s. Well, at least I have this feeling flying this airplane. Well, you're like in this old car and you have some kind of GPS navigation and some of electric systems. And the worst thing for me as a pilot is small cockpit. I don't know why they did like this, why they designed this small cockpit. Maybe because it's aerodynamic of this fuselage or they want to save some space to cargo compartment. I don't know why, but it's very small if you compare it to Boeing Comparator, the Airbus 320, there is a big and comfortable cockpit. If you compare it to Boeing 767, it's very small. Then I was flying ATR, it was a small cockpit. Then I came to Boeing, small cockpit again. And of course, instead of having tray table in the front and some space for your legs, you have this control column and yoke. Things like that, my friends. And here we have the fourth generation of Boeing 737. It's not our topic today, maybe I'll tell you later about Boeing 737 MAX since I already passed the computer-based training for this airplane. And there's not so many differences with Boeing 737NG, but there's a huge difference as MCAS that put Boeing company into the deepest crisis possible with this airplane type. However, my friends, it's not 100% of Boeing's failure or design failure of this aircraft. It was also contributed by 
human factor, human mistakes and improper pilot's action that led those two situations with the Lion Air and uh, FE Open into the crash. Was it possible to avoid those crashes even with MCAS system improper operation? Of course it was possible. And yes, I'll make one more video about it, but now let's continue with Boeing 737-NG. And next we have low, and as I said to you before, I put into pluses that the airplane is very low and it's good for maintenance. However, for other things, it's not very good. You cannot put the engines under the wing with high bypass ratio without modificating the airplane landing gear by making it a little bit higher. So with every generation, Boeing 737 got higher, higher and higher. The landing gear got longer, longer and longer. And that is why the bottom side of the engine on Boeing 737 Classic and Boeing 737 NG is flat. And that was the main reason why they put MCAS on Boeing 737 MAX because they moved the engine a little bit forward and upper and they needed MCAS to compensate this upward moment on the engine high thrust setting. And the last from not good things we have pilot salary and future. Well, the future of Boeing 737 MAX is a little bit foggy because we are now in the main aviation crisis due to virus and this airplane is still grounded and Boeing 737-NG is no longer in production. I personally expect that in a few years, like 5 or 10 years, there will be much less Boeing 737-NGs flying around. So if there will be no Boeing 737 MAX available, I don't know what should I fly in the future, so I have some kind of uncertainty in the future. And certainty. The aviation market is full of Boeing 737-NGs, and new airplanes are not expected, so the pilot salary already dropped if you compare it to Airbus pilots. So the Airbus pilot now earns more compared to Boeing 737 pilots. That is as a rule, because they may be some kind of exceptions. But usually it's like this, if you open page for pilot hiring, for example in China, you'll see the salary is higher for Airbus pilots. I have new tradition, so I'm just writing the conclusion and let me read it out. There is no any perfect airplane in the world and Boeing 737 is not perfect either. Aviation is always developing, so the airplanes are. To be honest, at first I didn't like the Boeing 737 because of old cockpit design, but after a while I understood that I like it. It can still give some experience of manual flying and it also has advanced automatic systems. It's very reliable and I have no any problems flying it. Of course there are many airplanes in the world that I'm willing to fly, but what I have now is absolutely great. And now my friends it's time for our awesome guy challenge. Prove me that you're awesome guy, so we need to follow this special checklist. First, like this video, then subscribe to my channel, then press the bell, whatever it means, and have a great time!